It's Week 7 on ESPN. The Colts come into this game with surprising quickness and skill in their secondary. Their top-tier pass defense is ranked up among the best at number 4 in the league. They will be facing a team with a different strong point versus the Steelers, who come in running the ball with reasonable success. It's not the focus of their game plan, but it gets the job done. So let's see how it plays out in Pittsburgh with Dan Stevens and Peter O'Keefe. Welcome. It's a gorgeous evening for football here at Pittsburgh Stadium. I'm Dan Stevens with Peter O'Keefe. Peter, how about giving us the lowdown? Well, Dan, you have a coach here that's still getting his squad working together and a man that's going to do his best to disrupt them. Bill Cowher has not had success with his running game. He's struggling to find answers, but today may be the day he finds them. Chad Bratsky comes in as a solid performer on the D-line for his team, drawing the occasional double team and putting up some good stats. Defensively this season, he's averaged two tackles and just under a sack a game. Okay, Peter, now let's go to midfield for the coin toss. You want tail? Tail call. It is it head. Is head. The Steelers elect to receive, and we're ready to start the game. Smith gets ready to get this game underway. Catches it in the end zone. For 20. Brought down at the 24 yard line. First down. And first play of the drive. Let's see what they do. First and 10. Let's go, guys. Get the fans from the field. They line up in the eye. Good tackle by the second year man out of Virginia Tech. Peter, let's go over the starting offensive players for the Steelers. Let's begin with the offensive line. Alan Feneca powers up this line considerably, and that will give his quarterback more time. Up now are the receivers. Heinz Ward leads this squad, putting on a big show for the fans. So far this season, he's averaged 64 yards on five catches a game. And lastly, the man who calls the plays and the guys who back him up. Jerome Bettis provides a vital contribution to this group. On the ground this season, he's averaged 61 yards and just under a fumble a game. Okay, back to the action. Second and ten. They line up with two tight ends. Stewart drops back. Barely gets it off. They bring him down immediately, but he won't have the first down. Ryan Ward turns on the juice and rips this ball down. Watch how he aggressively goes after this. Oh, man. Oh, he, yeah. he shows great replay. Leaning out to grab that pass. Well, some receivers would be forced to dive for a ball like that, yeah. but he manages to get under the ball. Fantastic play. Ball on the 34. there Dan let's watch that again oh, that's cool yeah if style points were awarded in football you can bet he'd be leading the pack ball at the 43 yard line Tight end is lined up left side. Stewart comes back. Throws.
Second and one. Put the back. Put the back. He tackled, but not until he enters past the markers for a first down. Peter, let's run down the Colts defense. We'll start off with the D-line. Cad Bratsky shows tremendous heart, and the other linemen respect that. Next up are the linebackers. Mike Peterson pulls together all the loose ends and reads the quarterback size like a book. Finally, Peter, the secondary. Idris Bashir stays neck and neck with his man, neutralizing him. Let's get back to the game. It's first and ten. One man back. Bettis with the ball. A game of ten. A game of ten on the play. Second down. Jerome Bettis is fearless on this play. Watch this move here. You see what I mean there? No fear, just the love, determination, and the will to fight back. That looked painful. You know, uh, that guy, he's stiff arm, might want to buy him a pair of leather gloves for Christmas. Hey, you know? Yeah, and if he needs to know his hand size, all he has to do is look down at that mark on his chest. Second and less than a yard. They go with the eye formation. Bettis gets it again. Three and the first down. Got a couple there and picked up the first. Nice run. The Steelers have a first down. It's their fourth of this drive, and they keep pounding away. Three wide receivers on the field. The Steelers still stay with the run. Parker stops that play after only a couple of yards. Took this one off his right guard and gets a few. Ball on the 17. Watch for the run! Watch for the run! Open field wide left. Stiff arm. Nice run by the ten year man out of Notre Dame. Oliver Ross just crushed his man off the line, and that's what sprung this doozy of a run. Oh, man, that was nice. Oh, how sweet it is. All speed after that. He gobbled up the yards, Peter. That's like driving down the highway just on the road by yourself. <laughs> it sure is. They'll have four chances to put it in. First and goal. Stewart, a bad Links up perfectly with his man to the score. We'll take another look. That's six points. They were totally synced up on that play. A great route plus a great catch. He put six points, and that's really great. Peterson will line up for the point after. The point is good. The Steelers draw first blood and put the first points up on the scoreboard. Seven to zero. Peterson is back to kick it away. Strong kick. Bobs fields it deep. Oh, a 25. 40. 40. Down at the 37 yard line. First down, 
Well, let's see if they can march down the field and answer right back with a touchdown of their own here. Ball at the 37-yard line. first quarter. The Steelers currently enjoying a small advantage. 7 to 0. It's second and 15. Peter, let's run down the Colts' offense. Let's begin with the offensive line. Tariq Glenn shows up to play on every down, Dan, protecting his quarterback at any cost. Next up, the receiving core. Marvin Harrison stands out as the best of the bunch. So far this season, he's averaged 68 yards on five catches a game. Finally, here's the general and his next in command. Peyton Manning gives this trio its punch. Through the air this season, he's averaged 238 yards and over a touchdown a game. Okay, back to the action. Third and four. They line up with their tight end right. Harrison in motion. James will run it. It's left side. A 20. Edwin James converts on third down. Man, that was a big one. They get the chains moving there. You know, I honestly think they, they took themselves out of contention on first and second down, Peter. But they came roaring back on third down. I think they're just trying to give the offensive coordinator maybe an aerobic workout or something. The Colts have a first after the big run on that last play. see what I mean. Oh, right into the D's hands. Oh boy, Peter, it is so tough to throw in these conditions. The weather is definitely the 12th man on the field for the defense. Yeah, you have to adjust your game plan in these conditions, and they didn't do that on this play. Jerome Bettis put up the big numbers last drive. Let's see what he can add on right here. First and ten. Get after that. I don't think so. Open field wide. Bashir makes the hit. Seven yard pickup on the play. Second down. Three yards to go. Ball on the 29. Nice first down. Throw guy, throw guy, double check. Bettis with the ball. Takes the left side. He sprints outside to about four. He'll pick up the first. Got a couple there and picked up the first. Nice run. Ball at the 33 yard line. yards on that first down play. It's, 
It's second at about three. It's second and short, baby. Cross for the run. The run, the run, the run. The Steelers yet again. We've reached the two-minute warning. They didn't get anywhere on that play. That leaves a lot of work to be done for third down. It's third and five. Three and out. It's three and out. Split backfield. Bettis will run it. Heads right side. He takes this one outside and will pick up a bunch of yards. And the first down. Jerome Bettis makes a no-frills run here, but I like that. He knows his job, and his job is getting the first down. And that's the pick. Got him with those markers, Peter. Good play. First and ten. First stop of the game. Got a few yards there off the first down carry. You can't Second underestimate down. the value of getting positive yardage on first down. All on the 49. Second and long's gonna be done, Law. Nice completion here. Take a look. There's the throw right in between the numbers. He had a line up just right, and they connected for a decent game. Just 51 seconds remaining. Three. Now the D moves faster than a leopard with new sneakers to shut down the outside run. Second down. 13 yards to go. Ball at the 46 yard line. Just like the last play. I'm going to run this back for a couple more. They line up with two wide outs. Venice with the tackle. Third and long coming up. The Steelers will take a timeout. That's their second. Carried this one off his left guard, and he picks up a little, but he's still not anywhere close to the first down. It's third and nine. Let's play smart, baby. Let's play smart. They have four receivers in. Stewart comes back. It's tight. Barely. Oh, what an unbelievable job to make the most out of that play and get the first. Great run after the catch. The Steelers take a timeout. That's their final one. Hines Ward is going to make the catch, but watch what he does afterwards. He's got it, and now he's going to get more. Oh, he's got oh, a receiver that can pick up eight or nine more yards after the catch. Oh, definitely. The Steelers moving the ball well. First down. Peterson lines up for the field goal. It's the way. Good. He's accurate from that range and he proves the throw. Bob Peterson really does a nice job here. Compensating for the weather. Watch this. Right through the upright. Boy, you can hardly tell that he did that in the middle of a rainstorm. The Steelers have extended their lead and make it a two-score game. They're up 10 to 0. Peterson sets up and will kick it away. Great kick. 
Bob will field it, and he will decide to down it. Well, they have the ball, but there's really only time for one more play before halftime. Let's see what they do with it. The clock is down to eight. They line up with two tight ends. Penny face back. Close. It's an interception. Well, they have the ball, but there's really only time for one more play before halftime. Let's see what they do with it. Three seconds left. It'll be a 28-yard attempt. Welcome to the ESPN Halftime Update. Let's review what went on in the first half. The Steelers close the half putting on a ball control clinic. Odds are they'll keep it up as we head into the second half. Cordell Stewart has up to now thrown for a total of 74 yards and one touchdown. A clear choice for our ESPN hot at the half player. That will do it for now. I'm Clark Dishman reminding you to tune in to ESPN's postgame show at the conclusion of the game. Let's send you back to Dan and Peter. The Steelers make it a two-score game. They are now up 13 to 0. Peterson sets up and will kick it away to start the third quarter. This is returnable. Rhodes fields it in the end zone. One twenty. <laughs> Well, last time they had it, they turned it over on the interception. Let's see if they worked out the kinks here. It's first and ten. Manning drops back. Throws. It's tipped. Incomplete. Oh, these guys are almost in different games, let alone different plays. we got to sync up better. Second and ten. Benny barely gets it off. Four pass on the five-year man out of Tennessee. Porter was slow getting off the field on that play, and when we find out what the problem is, of course, we'll pass it along. Ball on the 37. Drops back. Sits in the pocket. Throws. The pass is incomplete. Chad Scott. Got his body in the way of that one, Dan. It's all about clogging up the passing lanes. You can't coach that. Ball at the 37-yard line. They line up with their tight end left. Manning fades back. And he somehow finds the seam and all that and picks up some extra yards. First down. Peyton Manning had no trouble zinging that one past the defender, Dan. Perfect throw. He couldn't help but catch it. The ball was set for a special delivery. And the receiver didn't even have to sign for it. It's first and ten. Back on, back on. Manning from the gun. Throws. Pass falls incomplete. Porter had to leave the field earlier in the game, but now we know why. Let's go to Michelle Westfall on the sidelines. Michelle? 
Well, he just got back from the locker room, and the doctors are saying that it's a minor dislocation of the shoulder. They're taping it up, and there's a small chance that he may be able to return. Thanks, Michelle. Second and ten. Manny got up back, barely gets it off. Pollard was the intended receiver incomplete. Marcus Pollard should have come back for that one. I think he could have made a play on it. Third and ten. Hey, baby. Just go on and keep the pass up. Manning on touchdown. Throws. And it will be fourth and long. Dead stop. And to make sure that he was positioned between the QB and the receiver on that baby, there was no way that was going to be a completion. Smith comes in and will punt it away. It's off. Bob downs the punt. Really good game for this offense so far. They produced where it counts most the scoreboard and they can add more on this drive. Ball on the four. Bettis with the ball. No gain on the play. Took the handoff okay, and went right of center, but there wasn't much room past so the line of scrimmage on that one. Ten yards to go. Ball at the four-yard line. Macklin doesn't let that play develop and stops it after a couple of yards. Took the pitch way out left past the tackle. And he got a couple, but there's still a way to go to move the chains. It's third and about seven. Emerson gets penetration and makes a nice tackle behind the line. Joseph Jefferson couldn't have followed that play any better if he'd been given a map and a compass. He's there early to deliver a big tackle and shut down the play. That's great third down defense. You don't want to give them an inch. Miller comes in to punt after a three and out. This is an important drive, Dan. Although there's time left in the game to catch up, if they wait too long, it'll be very, very difficult. First and ten. They have their tight end to the right. Manning fades back. Barely gets it off. Stiff arm. Get some heat in the backfield, and you have to believe that it caused this pass to not go where he wanted it to. There's the INT right there. The pressure was good, but Peter, that was a nice play on the ball. You got that right, Dan. Great reaction time to snag the ball out of the air like that. Well, their offense takes the field after that great interception. Let's see if they can capitalize. Ball on the 31. You may have to fall now, but I'm getting right back. There's space wide right. Runs out at the 43 yard line.
Jerome Bettis was on fire on that run. You talk about keeping it floored, Dan. A little muscle car running, that's for sure, Peter. Very impressive acceleration. Oh, yeah, forget about the 40-yard dash time. I want to see his quarter-mile time. Ball at the 43-yard line. I formation. Stewart drops back. Throws. Pass is no good. Incomplete. I'm not sure he watched that one into his hands, Dan. Tough break. Second and ten. Stewart fades back, barely gets it off. Incomplete, and that's the second incompletion in a row. Cordell Stewart thrusted his arm there, but that was a pretty tough throw to make. A little defensive double team out on the receiver. Third and ten. Stewart drops back. Throws. Edwards nabs the football for a nice reception right there but the play doesn't stop there Dan no sir that's just the first action. beautiful big yard play a sterling effort all around first and ten they line up in the eye Bettis will run it. Peterson comes in and makes the tackle. Well, they run it around the outside, and the defense isn't ready for it. They thought they'd keep punching it up the middle. Ball on the 24. We got eyes open. Don't give them an inch. All run. All run. Bettis with the carry. Good takedown by the four-year man out of Florida. It's third and five. Single back formation. Fourth and long. It's the end of the third quarter. The Steelers are serving up a shutout, 13 to zero. Peterson lines up for the field goal. Straight down the play. Yeah, nice kick, and the special team squad is happy about that. They love to see it go smoothly, just as that one did. The Steelers have extended their lead and make it a two-score game. They're up 16 to zero. Peterson lines up for the kickoff. Got all of his leg behind this one. They allowed a field goal on defense. Now it's their turn to deliver on offense. Let's see what they do. Ball at the 20-yard line.
defense sends that one back to the factory with a devastating stop in the backfield. Big loss there. It's second and 15. Going with four wideouts. Penny is close. That will bring up third and long. Chad Scott is covering the receiver like a wool blanket, baby. He didn't let nothing get through. It's third and 15. They line up in the shotgun. On the gun, close. it's hit. The pass is incomplete. You know, the passing game is so tough in wet weather. It's hard to get a lot of air under the ball, and he ended up underthrowing it. They've decided to go for it, and I got to tell you, unless they pull off a miracle here, they're really going to put their defense in a tight spot. a drive-stopping tackle. They will turn the ball over on down. Wendell Alexander makes a huge tackle. Watch the stop here. Oh, there was no way he was going to get the first down. Peter, they were way back there. That is a costly play. You nailed that on the head, my friend. Pretty much just gave the other team a score. They came away with three last time, and I'm, I'm kind of curious to see if they can punch this drive into the end zone. All on the 28th. Bettis will run it through the foreground. A 15. Five. Runs on the at the four-yard line. Jerome Bettis executes a major run. He puts the pedal to the metal from the word go and doesn't let up until they finally snag him. But it sure took him a while. He is the man of the hour in my book, Peter. Well, they're going to need more than a half-hearted arm tackle to put him down. They can't move up. They're running. Watch the run. Nice stop by the third-year man out of Auburn. Peter, I want to stop here, if I may, go back a down and talk about that run. That was a heck of a play. Oh, Dan, that was a good game there. I agree. Jerome Bettis has a powerful running style. You know, he's called the bus because he takes tacklers along for a ride before he's finally dropped. Second and goal. Bettis gets it again. It will be third and into. Steelers take a little too long and get the delay of game call. You gotta watch that countdown. It's third and goal. Brutal in motion. 
Bennett with the goal. Oh, oh, We have reached the two-minute warning. It'll be a 19-yard attempt, one yard shorter than a point after. in a nice little dinger. Straight and true. Oh, just as cool as if he was tossing a crumpled piece of paper into a wastebasket. The Steelers now have a comfortable lead in this one. The score, 19 to 0. Peterson is back to kick it away. What a kickoff through the uprights. Give that kicker three points. Another turn at offense for this group, and unfortunately, this game is pretty much over. They should just try and get some yards for respect at this point. It's first and ten. Manning on shotgun. Throws. The 45. Reggie Wayne really executed well on that play. Let's take a look. Here's the catch. And it's a good one, but there's no time to celebrate. No, nope, because he's already thinking about how much farther he can go. And he goes a pretty long way, Peter. The Colts have a first after the big pass on that last play. Wayne lines up wide left after the big game last play. Many big back throws. A 25, 15, and down at the 12 yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. The Colts, after the big pass last play, will have a first down. Wayne, wide right. And we'll see if he can repeat his performance from the last play. Manning comes back. Throws. Nice catch by the eight-year man out of Bradley. The Colts take their first time out. Got some nice yards there off the first down play, and that really opens things up a bit for this next one. A minute and 40 seconds on the game clock. Really gets it up. The Steelers have really rattled their passing attack. I'm seeing a real confident defense out there, Dan. There it is. Add to the stats, buddy. They have really grounded out their air attack with interception after interception. Yeah, once you start making the quarterback second-guess himself, it's all over. This drive will wrap it up for them. Well in control of this game, Dan. They just need to pound it out and take time off the clock. The clock is down to a minute and 38 seconds. They have two tight ends in. Bettis with the ball. Blatsky doesn't let that get far at all and makes the tackle just past the line. The Colts will take a timeout. That's their second. Carried this one off his left guard, but he's barely past the line of scrimmage before he stopped. All at the 22-yard line. Bettis will run. The Colts. Take a timeout. That's their final one. It's 
Third and five. Let's play smart, baby. Let's play smart. Bettis to get the ball again. Oh, up a tackle. Another move. Out in front of everybody. Jerome Bettis barrels through on this play for some nice yards. Watch this now. Oh, thank you, stiff arm. Well, we just saw that the offense can play pretty well. Two meter, that move really opened this play up and allowed some big yards. They've been controlling the game today with their devastating ground attack. He'll take a knee, and the clock will wind down. Second down. Twelve yards to go. Now second and 12. Two tight ends on the field. He'll take a knee and the clock will wind down. And that's the end of the game. The Steelers win in a blowout, 19-0. That'll wrap it up for us. On behalf of everybody here at ESPN, including Peter O'Keefe, Michelle Westfall, and myself, Dan Stevens, thanks for spending time with us. Up next, the ESPN Post Game Wrap-Up. Thanks for joining us here on the ESPN Post Game Show. I'm Clark Dishman. The Steelers come away with a commanding 19-point win over the Colts. They now move to 2-4 and four on the year. The Steelers dominated time of possession in this game, and it's a credit to their defense. The numbers show just how good the game plan was and how well they responded to anything thrown at them. Jerome Bettis ran for a total of 133 yards and no fumbles. He will get our ESPN Player of the Game. And that's all we have for you today. Don't forget to tune in to the weekly wrap-up for this week's scores, highlights, and analysis. I'm Clark Dishman. We'll see you then. Welcome to the ESPN Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm Clark Dishman. Let's take a look at the scores from this week. We'll begin with the Dolphins, who got the win to move to 6-1 on the year. The Falcons come away with a decisive 10-point win over the Panthers. Over in the NFC North battle, we had the Bears win by four. The Jaguars get their fourth win of the year. Minnesota came away with a tough loss on the road. The Rams come away with a close three-point win over the Seahawks. Down in New Orleans, we have the 49ers win by three. The Texans get their second win of the year. San Diego came away with a win on the road. The Cowboys come away with a big 12-point win over the Cardinals. Up in Pittsburgh, we have the Steelers win by 19. And finally, we have the Packers win by four. Now let's go straight to our ESPN Highlight of the Week. Brett Favre was able to drive it downfield, and right here you can see his longest pass of the day. Amazing! <laughs> Jerome Bettis is our ESPN Offensive Player of the Week. And when you look at his numbers, you can see why. A standout performance by anyone's standards. Mike Peterson comes away with some remarkable numbers and it shows that he was truly a force to be reckoned with. He gets our ESPN Defensive Player of the Week award.